Hey everyone, it's Hacking Month here at IT Pro TV, and we figured what better way to celebrate than actually hack something. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create an administrative user without being an administrator. Stick around to see. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel Lowry, an entertainer here with IT Pro TV, and today I'm going to show you how you can create or possibly create an administrative user without actually being an admin. But before we get to all that fun stuff, make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit like, and share with your friends. And now that that's all said and done with, let's jump into the computer and see what the heck we're talking about. How do we do all that? Well, I've got this lovely web application open. It's called Juice Shop. It is a great tool for doing demonstrations such as these because it is a very modern like web application that is meant to have a bunch of security flaws in it so that you can play around and test with this. So this isn't like a live site or anything. It is meant for testing. But what I need to do is I need to gather some information. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create an account. So I have the account area and I'll hit log in. And here, as with most sites, you will see a lot of times, it will say if you don't have a login, you can create one. This says not a customer yet. Well, I'll click on that link. Now, one thing I need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and start my proxy server. And this is, uh, the Burp Suite is what I'm using for this demonstration. But what it's gonna do is gonna gather all the information that I'm doing and save that so that I can see it, manipulate it, and resend information even. So what I'll do is I'll fill out the form I'll make the email, we will make it, um, f we'll call it admin2, admin2, at, and you can just, this is easy to register, it doesn't have to be real, uh, we'll just call it uh, example.com. Go to password, make that anything you like, I'll just make it admin, repeat my password of admin, and then I'm making sure I'm, I'm following all the rules, it says the password must be 5 to 20 characters long, I think I've got 5 characters, so look at me. Then you fill out a security question. Again, this is just for the purposes of gathering information. So just pick whatever you like. Mother's well, birth dates, and that's fine. I guess it's gonna ask me for that. I don't want that format, so I'll go with maternal grandmother's name. And we'll call her admin, because I'm just trying to fill this out. All right, hit register. And it says registration successfully completed. And now you can log in. Excellent. But I don't actually want to log in. I just want to see what happens during the registration process, which is where our proxy comes in. So I'm gonna go up to Burp Suite and check that out. I see we went to this uh, API users area, which you can see right there. And it was a post request. And again, I'm just kind of learning about how this application does its thing. We also have this security answers. And then once that was done, it says uh, admin application configuration. This is probably on the back end of something happening here. All right. So now that I know what request was made and how that looks, let's kind of scroll down here to the actual request. I'm going to bring this up so that we can see this better. And we can see here is the request that the browser made when it sent it off to Juice Shop to be processed. It's a pretty straightforward thing. We see that there's all the, for, the, the fields we filled out. We got email, admin2 at example.com. There's the password of admin, the password repeat of admin. We got a security question. Uh, we went with, I guess, ID number five, so the fifth question in the list, what's your uh, maternal grandmother's first name? And we filled that out with the word admin. Excellent. Now that we know how that looks normally, let's see what the response looks like normally. Let's jump over here. So we have a, a 201, everything looks good. There's a bunch of headers that are coming back. But ultimately, I just want to look at the data that comes back. We got a status of success and then a creation of what looks like information in what's called JSON. Um, we have a username, we've got a role of customer, deluxe token, last login IP, profile image, is active, ID. Now, a lot of this stuff is interesting because some of it was things that we saw when we were creating things, like the email address that, that passed along. I began to wonder, could I manipulate some of these fields that were not available to me through the web form if I were to do it using something like Burp Suite here. Like this role. I like the role of customer, but it would be a whole lot nicer if it was admin. Like, let's just be honest here, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we want in life. 
So if I fill the form back out and resend it along with the role as well, and I change that to admin, would it give me an administrator? When I look at this new user that I'm about to create, will it tell, the, tell me that the role is that of an administrator? Well, only one way to find out. Let's go over here to our, our standard request for creating a new admin or a new user, and I will right click and send that to the repeater. The repeater is a really cool tool because it allows us to repeat requests that we have already made. Let's kind of move it over here a little bit. And now we can come over here, scroll around a little bit, and we can manipulate this information. Now we can't resend this because there's already admin too. We've already created that as a user. So we'll most likely get a, hey, uh, you're, that, that user is already created. And well, I'm not afraid of sending that and see what happens. If I send it, it does say validation error. And you can see right here, the email must be unique. So it's telling me that I can't reuse admin too. Okay, well, that's no problem. The great thing about sending it to the repeater is we can make modifications. So we'll call this admin three, password admin, security question, all that other goodness. But I'm gonna add that role inside of here. So I can just pop that in there and say role and use the same JSON formatting. And I'm just gonna call it admin and see if that makes a difference to my submission. If I go ahead and hit that send, I come over here, take a look at the response. I do see a success. I now see that I have a username of nothing, but the login IP is active is true. Oh, there it is right there under email. I can see my role is that of admin right there. So I've been able to manipulate this and create an administrative user without actually having administrative uh, credentials. <laughs> well, isn't that fun? That's always a neat day at the beach when you get to see where some poor developer just assumed the wrong thing and uh, thought that hiding things or not making them available to you, at least on the front end, would keep them safe on the back end side. But there you go. I've created a uh, administrative user without administrative privilege, but now I can log in with administrative privilege and have a great day for myself. Well, there you go. A lot of cool stuff. And this is the kind of thing that we learn in some of the hacking courses that we teach here at IT Pro TV. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check that out. Until then, have yourself a great day.